on the red carpet on the 46th annual Creative Arts Emmy Awards. Excited to talk to some of the celebs and some of the nominees tonight. Keep it here on Shine On Hollywood Magazine. Oh my goodness. All right. So tell me all about you. You're giving us shine. Let's give you some shine. Oh, okay. Were we not? Okay. Oh, that wasn't all. That wasn't on. Okay. Let's try that all again. Let's hear you give us some shine. Yeah, right. Well, it's great to roll up on Shine on Hollywood. You guys are shining bright, and I'm the Hollywood Desperado celebrating my 40th year in show business. And I know your network, and I know your hosts, and you guys do a great job getting all the stories. And what's great about being out here at the Daytime Emmy Awards for the Creative Arts is supporting the people behind the scenes, the people that are shooting the cameras and the people that are setting the lighting. And then also, we have a very diverse group of categories from children's uh, uh, shows, talk shows, which is mostly my field, is a late night talk show or morning talk show or afternoon talk show. I'm a comedian, so that's our medium. But I also had my brush with General Hospital, all the soap opera people, which always intimidate me because they're always quaffed. They're beautifully dressed, and you know, it's like they just stepped out of a dream. Totally right, and, and mine's more of a, a funny dream. <laughs> Same, <laughs> right? But you know, I just feel like I brought humor to bring a little comic relief to so much of the heavy drama. So a little breath of fresh air. Yes, yeah, so it's always great to be out here supporting, you know, and being part of a great event like this. Also, my buddy David Osman is hosting the Creative Arts Emmys tonight. I am so excited to see him because I think he's going to do great. He is great. He's he's not as great as me, but the fact of the matter is that I coached him, I trained him, everything you see is going to be a little bit of me, and, but it's not because he's amazing on his own and he comes from that lineage of the great Osmond family who I did work with. I remember in the early days of, uh, of the Donnie and Marie show and, uh, and to just watch the whole family continue to grow and then to see the next generations coming along and not forgetting the originals, my buddies Jay, Alan, Merrill, and forgive me if I'm missing any one of the other guys, of course Donnie and Marie. Marie. But um, so glad to be here and so glad to see Shine on Hollywood. All right, Shine on. Nice talking to you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I am here with the host of the evening, David Osmond. How are you? Shine on Hollywood. How you doing? We're great. So what kind of preparation do you normally do before you host a big event like this? Do you eat something different for breakfast? Do you give yourself a pep talk? What is it that you do? I had a club sandwich. Um, I had oatmeal. And I, I didn't think about that. No one's ever asked me that. I don't think I asked myself that. I just kind of went. I host a kids' TV show, so I'm kind of. I feel like this is almost the same thing. It's totally. in my wheelhouse. We're all big kids, and we're celebrating tonight. It's like a party. So my my task is to set the pace. I'm going to start off with a song. I'm a music guy, and so it's a swinging tune, a Steve Allen. We change the words to be kind of emified, be like the Emmys. Weird Al Yankovic a bit. And, and hopefully have some fun tonight, but also get out of the way. We got a lot of awards to get to. We want to celebrate the real stars, the unsung heroes. There's people in all walks of life uh, here on this red carpet, going to be here. And it takes a village to make a great show. And these are the best of the best. Are you nervous? Are you nervous about tonight? Do I look nervous? No, you don't. I don't see any smile. I don't know. I kind of, I think I, I grew up on stage. I've been performing since I was a wee lad. Did you perform with Donnie and Marie at any point? Or? Oh yeah, Marie and I all, all the time still do. I am with Anne-Marie Cummings and the legendary Loon Diamond Phillips. Thank you so much for joining us of both course, this evening. Of course. Now you're nominated tonight for your very first daytime Emmy for a guest role. Yes. How does it feel to be nominated? Uh, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely. I mean, one of one of the things is that this comes so out of the blue. I didn't do this to get nominated. Uh, this is my second Emmy nomination. I was nominated two years ago uh, for uh, for a comedy. Once again, out of left field. Not what people expect from me. And to be nominated for this is just icing on the cake. You know, I did it because I thought it was such a wonderful project, so challenging, so fresh and original. Uh, to be able to work with, with a female writer, director, creator. Uh, you know, it, it, it just you know checked all the boxes for me. And to be here tonight is. Uh, it really, it's, it's the cherry on the sundae. What advice do you have for young up-and-coming actors who would love to do what you do? Oh my goodness, well we were just talking about this. Uh, I mean first of all, you know, learn your craft. Have respect for the work, have respect for the art. And then have some patience. It doesn't happen overnight. Apply yourself and even after success comes, don't get lazy. This is one of the reasons I did this. Continue to challenge yourself. Continue to do it because of the work, because of the art and not necessarily because of the acc accolades or attention. Thank you so much. Thank you both. What's, the, what's your most favorite thing about working on this show? Um, oh, probably the family about it, the family environment. Um, 
it's I mean we're so close and tight-knit and we really like we support each other in all aspects of life and it's just really such a strong backbone so I, I love that and then of course creating um, a show you know the filmmaking side of it is great I love I love acting on it that's so fun and I also you know producing just comes really naturally so you know we just kind of go on autopilot okay we're launched for season five or greenlit let's go you know so we all just kind of do our thing so it's 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 fun it's nice that's great. So if you had if you had to give one piece of advice to a young person kind of breaking into show business today, you know, just breaking in, what advice would would you give them? Never give up. Don't give up because you're going to want to. <laughs> just don't. You know, follow your passion, your dreams because um, eventually it just doesn't it doesn't feel like work anymore um, if you're doing something you don't like it does feel like work but uh, you know and of course you're gonna hit the bumps along the way that's unavoidable but just keep going that's that great so here at shine on we we kind of focus on charitable organizations also is there a charity that you want to give a shout out to or um, that you support probably children uh, children of the night or something what is that? Yeah. What is that? it just you know it helps um, helps kids get off the street. We are here with the director and the cast and the crew from the Bay. I'm from the Bay Area, but that's a different kind of Bay. Tell us about your show. Um, well, she's executive producer and my writing partner. And um, I direct the show. And uh, we are on Amazon Prime. We're now going into our fifth season. We do 10 to 14 episodes a season. Um, this is Gregory this, Martin. He created I, the show. He writes, <laughs> produces, and directs the show. <laughs> and we're uh, his we're baby. We're, this year, we're nominated for seven. This is our lead actor, Christos. Christos, hey. welcome. I was kind of uh, kindly uh, pushed into you guys. I hope I'm not interrupting yes. too much. No, we were glad to talk to you, and you're nominated tonight as well. But this is not your first nomination. How are you feeling? I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling cheerful I'm really grateful to be here and to join the room again with amazing talent and Wendy who looks out for me like my my uh, there was something with my collar I appreciate it <laughs> yeah thank you it's a beautiful <laughs> thing amazing to work with I love them we're family and they're geniuses they understand the arithmetic to the heart really well and I'm happy to perform in the material Hashtag arithmetic to the heart. I love that. What is, what's the secret behind some of this magic that you guys have? Like, how do you create that on a cast? You hire good actors, for starters. You have great characters that Gregory creates. Thank you. And you have fun. Everybody respects everybody. Yeah. So it's, We're definitely a family. You I have to keep that family essence. And we, we're, we're, I mean, it means a lot to us. It sounds like the mob, but, but yes. <laughs> Family is very important. And there's a lot of buzz around the show. Tell me a little bit about it. It's a crime romance. Uh, it follows uh, the Garretts, Christos' character Pete, and his mother Sarah, Mary Beth Evans. Um, and uh, the town is supposedly cursed by a spirit of an old senator. And so anything that can go wrong does. Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a yeah it's cool to have that sort of undercurrent of mystery going on it adds a nice it's a really cool element to have because every bit of danger in the show has a little bit more levels to it with that mystery going on and uh mixed with the heartstrings and the love stories going on it's a nicely woven web you guys do so it's a very rich show and what's kind of the inspiration when you write Gregory, <laughs> <laughs> the characters. Well, yeah. well she's my the inspiration the too, characters and, and, and the characters in Christos. Yeah. I think um, he's my inspiration, <laughs> and you're my inspiration. This is true. There's a lot of love here. It sounds like a love fest, and it really it is. is true. Yeah. We're not because like. We're not lying. No, <laughs> this is what and, we feel. You know, uh, as <laughs> writers and producers, we're inspired by the actors, and the actors are inspired by the characters, and the writing, the good writing always comes from good characters, and, you know, actors bring it to life. So it's, it's a very good group. It's a beautiful thing you guys have going. Good luck tonight. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you no? talking to us. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Devin. I'm John from Shine on Hollywood. How are you doing? Good. How are you? How are you feeling tonight? I'm really excited to be here. It's a great opportunity for me. How did you get started in this, this business? Uh, I started when I was five years old. I was just sitting with my mom and I told her that I wanted to be on TV. 
So you play an animated uh, character, is that right? Yeah, Daniel Tiger on Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. So what? What can you do the voice for a minute? What would What would he say? Uh, Put, get in character uh, for a minute. No, how would he How would he feel right now? My voice changed, so I got recasted <laughs> when it dropped. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what would you give? Um, what would advice would you give to someone just trying to break into this business? What What like maybe someone your age or younger? What would you say to them? Never give up and just keep on trying. Great. That's the best advice. That's perfect. What's the most difficult part about playing an animated character? Um, just trying to get in the moment as like this as what they're feeling, like try and experience the way they're feeling in the show or in the animation. And how do you how do you do that? How do you overcome that or or get into character? What's the process like? I guess I just like kind of get into like a zone and just like try and feel the way they're feeling. Perfect. Thanks so much. Good luck. Are you nominated tonight? I am. So uh, I am the creator, executive producer, and star of Giants, and we are a nominated show this year. Okay. Yeah, so we have 10 categories going up tonight. Personally, I'm nominated for Outstanding Writing in a Digital Drama Series. Yeah. Tell me what the process is like as a writer. Do you have to have space and time to have the creative zone, or does it just come naturally to you? You know, for me, writing is such a process. Uh, it's difficult, it's hard. Uh, they say that good writing is literally bleeding on the page, and I feel every single drop of that blood. Uh, but luckily, I have a really great writer's room, and that's the cool part about epic sided writing, is you're not in it alone. It's a team sport. And so I have uh, three other incredible writers who uh, really help uh, make the process a little bit easier. And you have nine nominations tonight, which is so incredibly actually, exciting. Actually, ten. Ten as a show. Yeah, so we're nominated from everything, from our an original song down to uh, outstanding you know actress in, in a digital drama outstanding directing outstanding writing and then tomorrow or well Sunday at the daytime Emmys outstanding digital drama series so a lot of nominations a lot of nominations so excited for you congratulations and good luck thank you so much so tell us a little bit about the series yeah um, it's a it's a documentary film about the only medical team in Utah who treated HIV AIDS patients at the height of the crisis when people were being cast out of their communities and had nowhere else to go so what was, the, what was the motivation for this, or what kind of inspired you? You know, I, I'm from Salt Lake originally, and I had heard of the main subjects, Kristen Reese and Maggie Snyder, and I had never met them. And through a mutual friend, I was able to connect and fell in love immediately. Um, see the film, They're, they are every bit as charming in person as they are on the screen. And uh, thought that that was a story that even though it happened 25 years ago, it still really resonates today. We have a long way to go. And so what, what are some of the challenges about doing a documentary? Uh, I don't think we were prepared for the emotional roller coaster that goes into it. Uh, you never quite know what to expect, what film you're going to end up with. And uh, eventually we landed on something that, that has, has done pretty well, premiered at Sundance in 2018, and, and we got some distribution, and of course now we're, we're here at the Emmys, so it's not a, not a bad trajectory for us. And so if you were giving an advice to a really young person who was just trying to break into this field, what, what what advice would you give them? Uh, I would say the key advice is to do as much as you can. Work on as many films as you can. Do every role, edit, hold, you learn how to shoot and and write because you never quite know which project is going to take. And and the more relationships you have, the more likely you, you'll be able to work with someone on something that takes off. One more question. What's your motto in life? <laughs> um, I think my personal motto is uh, Use storytelling to empower voices who were previously shut out of the system. Love it, great. What's your motto? Um, I think uh, it would be finish things. Like when you feel like giving up, finish things and then forgive yourself for all the things that you messed up. <laughs> right. I am here with Kelsey Scott, who is just a beautiful vision in pink today, and you are nominated as well. I am, I am for a guest performer in a digital drama series. How, how are you feeling to this evening? I'm just really excited. You know, I really love this show and I really consider the people that I work with family. So this is just like a big celebration for us. You know, obviously, obviously we have hopes and dreams about how this evening turns out, but I think that right now we feel, we feel really, really grateful. It's such a beautiful thing to have a cast and crew that you really vibe with and get along with. Tell me what the secret is behind some of that magic. I think that it's magic. I don't think there is a secret. I think you come together and sometimes people, sometimes people's energies work and sometimes they don't. And we just lucked up this time. <laughs> Absolutely. And tell me about your character. Uh, so my character is a life coach. Uh, she's a YouTube life coach, kind of one of those, um, uh, the person that sits in her living room. She doesn't have any 
particular degrees, <laughs> but she knows things, or she thinks she does, and so her, her, uh, all of her kind of mentorship has managed to give a lot of help to the main character, and so she steps outside of YouTube into his real world, really his head, uh, and really kind of walks him through a troubled time. Wow. That sounds so great. What advice do you have for young actors in the industry? What advice do you have for them? Have a tribe, a circle. This is... This is just not a journey you should take by yourself. There's just there's just too many pitfalls in it, emotional, uh, career-wise, physical. And so, if you just have a circle of people that you really and truly can lean on, you can you can go you can go longer because I think it's about longevity. It's absolutely the marathon, not the sprint. And what's kind of your biggest motivator? Because we're all about positivity at um, at our station. So I'm like, what is the biggest piece of inspiration in your life, or the biggest motivating factor you have to do what you do? You know what? I'm gonna have to say my mom. My mom passed away some years ago, but she always believed that I would stay in places like this, that I would do things like this. She told me, you can do anything, and I believed her. And so now that she's passed on, it's really about making her proud and knowing that she's watching and hoping that I'm living up to her belief in me. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much for talking to uh, us. Thank you for talking to me. Good luck. Thank you. I'm here with Carly Shiraki and Cody Easterwood, who are here with two nominations tonight, both the shows that you're hosting. Tell me about your shows. That's right. So I host a show called Snug's House on Universal Kids. It's an interstitial with a, uh, it's me and a dog puppet um, and my friend TJ and we all hang out inside of Snug's house. And then uh, the Big Fun Crafty Show, which Cody and I made together, is an arts and crafts reality competition show uh, for slightly older kids um, and it's super, super fun. So they're both nominated in uh, Best Live Action um, Preschool Show and we're super excited. Also, the dress that I'm wearing right now, um, we did an Instagram challenge. Uh, a friend of mine made it for me and the print um, was designed by a 10-year-old kid named Emma. So we had uh, a bunch of submissions come through and hers was the best. So uh, we had it sent away to be turned into fabric and here it is. It looks beautiful. I cannot believe a 10-year-old did this. Right? Stunning. And she, and she used to watch me years ago on the show that I did before the one I'm on now. And the woman who made the dress, her, like, it just, it's all, it's all good. It's all good juju. So Marcy Harriel built the dress and then Emma, age 10, designed the pattern. And that's the wonderful thing about Carly is not only does she host a crafting competition show for kids, but she also encourages and inspires craftiness all around. So these kids were sending in designs and it was such an honor to work with you oh to be able to inspire the next generation of crafters. So yeah. we're honored that our show is nominated and another show and of hers so is nominated. Yes, we're super excited to be here. Yeah. Well, congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, if Darius was here right now, what do you think he'd say? Oh, man. Darius, if Darius was here right now, what he would say, he would say, Amir, I'm proud of you. Because <laughs> he wouldn't be proud of himself. He wouldn't be proud of himself. I mean, he's a bad character right now, and he's trying to get out of this pit that he's in. He's a detective, and he's trying to climb out of this pit right now. So hopefully these guys have created the next script where I climb out of that pit and become a great citizen. So what's the hardest part about playing the role you play? Uh, the hardest part about playing that role? Well, the thing is, I, I would say this. I would say this. As a kid, I got into a lot of trouble, right? Went to prison, did a lot of bad things. So playing a police officer, which I hated police officers, now I'm a police officer. So that's the only thing that sometimes I, I grapple with that. So if you were a young person going back in time and being yourself, what, what piece of advice would you give, give yourself or a young person trying to break into this field? I would, I would, I would, the first of all, foremost, it's, it's, too, it's a twofold question that you ask. The advice that I would give myself is, Amir, be patient with yourself and value school value school because I didn't value school because I was dyslexic, right? So I, 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 I quit school in seventh grade, dropped out of school in seventh grade. Now, a person who's trying to get into this business, I would tell that person first and foremost, what they're going to need is, right, a desire and a passion to do this, something that's going to drive them and keep them going. And secondly, so encompass themselves with some positive cheerleaders, someone to cheer them on, someone to encourage them, some to, someone to root them on. And that's what Dan and I do. Dan is actually the producer, we're, but not only he's the producer, but we're great friends. So, and my, I would say, in my despair, uh, Dan was that guy who was telling me, listen, man, Amir, hold on, it's gonna get better. You know, keep fighting. So you're gonna need that. So what's one song that you listen to that kind of just peps you up and gets you going? Uh, well, I, I tell you what, to be honest with you, I tell people that, right? 
I'm self-motivated, man. I'm self-motivated. I'm self-determined because, you know, internally, I don't need any, I don't need an external factor to get me going. Internally, I'm already on fire. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. So, what's the hardest thing part about about producing the show? Um, maybe the the bitter cold in the winter of New York. Maybe. <laughs> Other than that, um, it's been it's been a blast. And what about you? The hardest part, um, you know, I I don't think there really is one really hard part. Um, I would say the most challenging part is that I, I directed all eight episodes of the first season, which is just make sure all the pieces lined up in one given day, because we would full, film multiple episodes to just make sure everything was lined up. But it's been it's been a wonderful ride. It's been great. Is there a storyline that's more difficult to kind of to, to direct? You know, the it's odd. The, my two two of my favorite storylines have been the Darius and the Yolanda um, storylines. You just interviewed uh, Darius by Amir and uh, uh, Yolanda Lowry. and Shanti Lowry. Their stories, we've had we had so much time. We, we've spent so many extra hours after rap, um, you know, midnight, two in the morning, continuing to develop those characters. So those have been the most the two most rewarding characters for me to develop. We are here with a dynamic father-daughter duo from Days of Our Lives. Right. Thanks for being here. Now, Days of Our Lives is such an iconic show. How does it feel to not only be part of the cast, but to be nominated and be part of this movement? It's it's amazing. I mean, I work on the music of the show, and I've been with the show for a couple of decades now, and it's it's always a privilege, and it's very exciting to be nominated and to be part of the, uh, the process. And your daughter is in it now. Well, I write score, and we've had a lot of younger actors on the show who are singers, and I've turned the songwriting chores for them to Genesis. So Genesis has been writing their songs. So what's the inspiration behind these songs? Um, oh my gosh, I mean, Claire, um, who Olivia Keegan plays on the show, is, I mean, she has such a beautiful voice to begin with, like, and she loves music as well. It's just like an amazing process to like really dive into. Like she's so into the story and so into what we're writing that it just really comes naturally with the story that's evolving for the characters. And I'm starting to write for Thea Magia, who plays Haley on the show as well, who's like a whole different ball game of sound and, and another like big emotional storyline. So yeah, we, we work together on that and it's just like a really natural Natural process. That's so exciting. Is there anything else you want to say about the show or to the fans of the show? Well, we do have something really exciting coming up at the end of the month that we went to Warner Brothers Sound in January. Warner Brothers Scoring Stage, a big movie stage with 38 string players. We added to our cues for this big thing that's going to happen in about three weeks. Or they're going to be the tip of the iceberg and it's going to play through the summer. So we've got a big exciting show that we've gone the extra mile in for the underscore. So hopefully we'll have some shows to submit for next year here. So stay tuned for that. Sounds good. Thank you guys so much. So excited. This is so cool. What are you looking forward to seeing most? Oh, I mean, hopefully maybe winning a daytime Emmy would be kind of cool. Just, just a little bit. A little. Tell me about the show. I loved the show. So I was on season two and my little brother is like four and he loved to watch like all the cooking shows. And so he got to watch me on TV and he was like having a heart attack. And so, yeah, like just being on the show was like a crazy experience. It was so cool. What's it like being on the show? Like, do you guys cook a million different things every time? Or what's the process like? Um, I mean, we cooked a different thing every time. So, like, I cooked a few different things. I mean, you know, um, it was it was so cool. It Thanks was for cool. chatting with us. Sure. I'm with Traeger and Rob, who have a very important show on the CW called Welcome Home. Tell us all about it. Well, what we do is we furnish homes for families who have just left homeless shelters. And Rob and I have been doing that with Humble Design for 10 years, our nonprofit, but just recently they turned the cameras on us and followed the process from meeting a family to right after they got them out of the shelter to completely furnishing their home and walking through the door. And I cry, he cries. I do cry on occasion. It does happen. <laughs> we work with the kids and moms a lot, so it gets very emotional. It's called humbledesign.org, is the nonprofit, and the television show is called Welcome Home. Wow, beautiful things. How does it feel to be nominated for it today, to get that recognition? I mean, we've never been on TV before yeah. this season, and to be nominated for your first season right out the gate, I think, hopefully, that this is um, really a trend of what's to come, I'm hoping. Yep. I'm so blown away that we're even standing here talking to you, and just so honored. It's really nice to be recognized for doing something you love, and really, this woman is the amazing star of the show, and the reason we're here tonight. We're married. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that dynamic. What's it like to be on TV with your real life partner. They cut out 
about me rolling my eyes all season long. <laughs> that was part of the contract. No rolling of the eyes. That gets cut out. No, it's, it is amazing. We get to do something we love together. We're helping others. It's pretty special. And um, I do really like but it. But we do argue around design choices, so that's kind of fun to be a part of. Yeah, it's been, it's been a blast. And also, we also know each other's strengths. And I, I love sitting and talking with the moms and understanding their story. And I cry, I ugly cry on a dime. <laughs> so I just feel, I feel what people are going through. So that is where I shine. And Rob is so good with the kids. I'm, I'm basically, out. yeah, I'm a man in a four-year-old's body. so Or a four-year-old in a man's body. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an amazing show. Good luck tonight. Thank you for talking to us. We are here with a real superstar tonight who's nominated for 11 awards. How are you feeling, sir? I feel great. Our show is nominated for 11. I am nominated for three personally, but you know, it's, that's kind of cool. Still same it's not idea. too bad. Three, three, I'll take it. Yes, exactly. Yes, definitely. No, it feels, it feels amazing. You know, I, I've been thinking back to when I first moved to LA, right? I was a seat filler at the NAACP Image Awards and I snuck backstage and I met every star that I'd ever wanted to meet within like two months of being in Los Angeles. That me wanted to get here for the wrong reasons. The me that I am today understands that being able to have a career in this business for the last 20 years like I've had is the only award that matters. This is icing on the cake and it's wonderful. I'm honored to be here. Congratulations. Yeah. What advice do you have for young up-and-coming actors? That's a great question. I'm asked that a lot in person by up-and-coming actors. What I would say is really check in with yourself and be as honest with yourself as humanly possible about whether you want to be an actor or whether you want to be a celebrity. If you want to be a celebrity, there are easier ways to do it. Don't waste your time. If you feel like I'm going to give this acting thing six months, save your six months. This is a lifelong journey to learn how to do this work and it's a sacred journey. I think people are done a disservice sometimes by somebody who is walking down the street and got discovered because that happens, that's 1% of 1% who are doing this for a living. I would say just check in with the love and make sure you love the craft, the art form, and that's the only way you should do it. Great advice. Thank you so much. Good luck tonight. So tell me about your character on the show. Yes. Okay. So um, I play Tilly, uh, Tilly Green on Big City Greens. And Tilly, you know, she's a simple girl. And uh, she really marches to the beat of her own drum. You know, she's a strange little character, that girl. But it's like so much fun to play a character like that who she's so wonderfully imperfect and comfortable with kind of being an outsider, which I think is a really cool message for kids. You know, she, she marches to the beat of her own drum. She doesn't need to be accepted by all the cool kids. She's like comfortable with herself. Absolutely, I love that. It's a great message for kids. Um, tell me about the actual show itself. What is it about? Sure, so Big City Greens is a story of the Green family. We're a bunch of uh, country folk, right? Uh, who move to the big city. So it's a real fish out of water story, um, you know, of like how you adjust to big city life when you're used to just being you and your farm animals. So we get into all kinds of crazy animals antics and situations. Oh my goodness, how fun. It's really, really fun. And where can we tune in? Uh, it's all over uh, Disney Channel and it reruns on Disney XD as well. Very cool. Both channels. Oh, very nice. All right, have fun tonight. Good luck. Oh, so I am with the beautiful Shanti Lauer tonight. You are just a vision this evening. How are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. Just, this has been such a positive experience so far, so it's great. Is there anything special that you did to prepare for this evening besides, of course, wear the most beautiful gown that I have ever seen ever? I totally agree. Um, yes, I just got up and I had my entire family at my house and we just hung out and had champagne and listened to music, got ready really slowly, and I guess I'm actually kind of tired now. It's been like a long day. It's, it's not great. It's the beginning of the... Just take it all in, girl. Oh, tell me about your character. I play Yolanda Rodriguez. She's a detective and she is really, really good at her job. She's really smart, but she has a lot of demons and she is a little bit of a self-sabotager and um, she's, but she's working through it, which is what I love. We have her genuinely working to strengthen herself and I don't think you see that a lot on TV. You see someone who falls and then they're just up. You don't really see how they build there. So that's what we did season one. We're building Yolanda back up to the strong woman and she should be. If she was here this evening, what advice would she have for you? Chill, relax. What advice do you have for young up and coming actors who want to do what you do? If you love it, it does not matter how many times you hear no. 
it just doesn't. We've all heard it a million times. We've all been on the floor crying because we are not good enough. We're never going to be worth anything. And then you get to do stuff like this. You just, you can't take no for an answer. If you love it, you keep doing it no matter what. So keep at it. Yeah. I really think that's the only advice because some people's career, it's easy and some people, they work their whole lives. You just have to keep going. I'm excited about it. I'm tonight as well. Oh, that's, are you nervous? A little bit. We did our run through already, so that kind of eased the nerves a little bit, but uh, it's a little, it's a little intimidating, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. What, what series is that again? I'm sorry? Uh, Anacostia. Anacostia series. Yeah. So, you know, the show, the show wasn't nominated this year, but, um, you know, I'm here by myself. I'm usually, I usually travel with them, with my cast, you know, We're we're, we're a tight cast, but uh, yeah, yeah. So they're all with me uh, here in spirit today. So tell us, if, uh, tell us uh, something to uh, what would you say to a young person that's trying to break into this oh, wow. field? What advice would you give them? I would say, you know, when it really comes down to it, if it's if it's your passion, don't give up. Um, you know, we've been doing this show for about ten years now, six seasons, and you know, there were times when you know it was like, hey, like. I'm tired. Let's, you know, what, what's next? And, um, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, we, we all got better as actors. The writing got better. Our direction got better. And, you know, and it just became a better product. And that was um, the motivation. And the fact that, you know, the cast and crew all became a family. And that, that was the, really the glue that held us all together. Um, but when you find, you know, like I said, if you have a passion, especially if you're working with people that you really enjoy working with, you know, stick it out. And, if, and, and as a collective unit, you can really achieve a lot. I'm here with Roger from Top Chef. Junior, how are you this evening? I'm really good this evening, thank you. How excited are you to be here tonight? Oh my, I am so excited. It's like a dream come true to like walk down the red carpet and it's really fun. Well, welcome. And so you're on Top Chef Junior. Does that mean you're also a chef and you love to cook? Yes, I am a chef and I do love to cook. <laughs> Tell me about some of the favorite things that you like to cook. Um, I love to cook a variety of different foods. I like to like learn different like cultures, you know, and express that into my cooking. So that's really fun. Ooh, oh my gosh! How long have you been cooking? I've been cooking my whole life. I'm um, like helping my parents in the kitchen, starting from there, and keep building up upon that until finally I became, made cooking my own, and I started experimenting, and it really just sprouted from there. That's incredible. I have a five-year-old, and he loves to help me in the kitchen. What advice do you have for younger kids who want to become chefs one day? To never give up. Keep trying. Keep learning. There's always new techniques, new things that you can come up with. It's such a, a wide variety of things you can learn in such a vast world of cooking and that there's never a time where you can stop learning because it's just so, so amazing. Amazing. So how did you get on this show? So I was watching the show one day and I'm just like, wow, that's really cool. So I, um, for my birthday, I wanted to audition and I just auditioned. I didn't think anything was going to come out of it. And eventually, through the audition process, I made it onto the show. So How did you get started in this business? I, you know, I was that annoying kid who, you know, played every instrument and had composition lessons at age 12 and, you know, and then I was in bands because all I wanted to do was being in a recording studio and I didn't know that there was this other strand of things. And then finally, uh, I started getting asked to do little pieces for commercials initially and then uh, I scored a couple of films that got some acclaim and, uh, and then from there it kind of picked up, you know. What's the best advice you ever got for, you know, for the business? <laughs> to keep creating no matter what because that's the only thing you can control you know you can't control how people react to it the vagaries of a career you know all of that stuff the politics but what you can control is that you can keep creating I'm here with Mitchell Anderson who's nominated for best actor tonight how are you feeling I'm so excited to be here um, I was an had been an actor since 1983 since I graduated from college I was an actor for 20 years left show business um, opened a restaurant in Atlanta called Metro Fresh. It's been open for now f almost 14 years. I was given an opportunity to come back and do this amazing role in this amazing digital series. And now here I am at the Emmys with a nomination. It's just an amazing story. It's an incredible story. Congratulations. That is so exciting. What do you have to say to some newcomers who are just starting out in acting? What advice would you have for them starting out? Well, I think you have to really want it. And when I started in show business, I was determined and I did really well. I did, I, I just worked my way up. You'd never get dis disappointed. You never get, um, you just keep going. You just keep going after it. 
Um, and then I did it for 20 years. And after I decided when I almost was 40 that I had auditioned just one too many times, I said, okay, now I'm gonna do something else. And look, you know, you never know what's gonna happen in life. And what led you back to show business? My friend Kevin Spiritus, who created this show, um, wrote it, and somehow he always thought that I should play this part. So he sent me the script, and that's what led me back. You know, just this beautiful part and this beautiful show. Um, we're nominated eight times for um, five for the, in the acting category, so I'm working with these amazing people. Um, and. You know, sometimes stepping out of your, your daily comfort is a really great thing to do. So here I am, and um, it's great to be recognized after so many years, because I was on television for, you know, 15, 20 years, and on great shows, and, you know, the shows got did well, but I was I was never on a red carpet like this, so it was, this is a different experience. Now, tell tell us about a little bit how you got, in, uh, you got into this business. Oh my gosh, I think it's just been 30 years of really trying to figure out what are the best stories to tell at the end of the day, whether you're doing news, you're doing um, sort of daytime storytelling, it's always just what's a good story, what's an interesting story. For Mysteries and Scandals, we take a look at a lot of crime stories, in some ways they've been done you know, historically, some of them are decades old, but we really like to re-examine them and, and look at them again with the information that we know now. So it's been a really fascinating show. I absolutely Sean love it. Sean Samuels. We're here with Sean Samuels, who looks so strapping tonight. How are you feeling? I'm feeling so great. It's overwhelming, but in such a, the best way possible. I'm so happy to be here today. Did you do anything special to prepare for this evening? Yes, I flew my best friend in to come and experience this with me and just to take this all in. So that was that's like an icing on the cake for me. Yeah. Are you nominated tonight? I am nominated. I'm nominated for Best or Outstanding Supporting Actor. So getting my mind wrapped around that, but it's it's an amazing feeling. Tell me about your show. My show is called Giants, and it's about three millennials, three African-American millennials living in Los Angeles, and it's a relationship drama, but also dealing with things internally and how you go about living your life with dealing your demons inside. So my character's name is Ade, and he's dealing with sexual identity. He's dealing with actually accepting his sexual identity and having having everyone else in his life, um, for example, his father, accept him as well. That's such an important topic. There are so many people who are going through that kind of a phase in their life. So what advice do you have for them? Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. There are too many kids who think that if they're not accepted at age 9 or 15, that the world is over. And that's, the, that's a tragic story about it. I was fortunate enough to have supporting family and mom and, and to be performing at a young age where I realized that performing was going to save my life. But for the kids who don't really have that opportunity, I just want to tell them it gets better. It gets easier because you'll get more understanding and more understanding of who you are. Not how the world sees you, but how you see yourself. So you are the composer for... Uh, that's right, for the Mickey Mouse shorts. How wonderful. So how do you go about doing that? What's your, in, how, what's your inspiration? I know it's Mickey Mouse, but how do you go about creating the music? Oh, well, it depends on, on the episode. You know, some of them, uh, some of them I get it relatively late and have to, have to work out what I'm doing to to whatever Mickey's doing. Some of them we do in the opposite order. You know, if they have a song, uh, uh, if, if Mickey's singing. Um, so, so we actually just, just did a, a new one, not the one that's nominated, but where the whole thing is a song. And we wrote the song together. Uh, and for that one, you write the song before they've animated anything. Um, where do you guys, where do you get your inspiration for the music? Do you, do you guys have kids or do you, <laughs> do you have music? Uh, I think Cole Porter said my inspiration is a phone call from a producer. I mean, <laughs> that's a good inspiration. So, so, how did you get into this business? Oh well, uh, I studied music for a long, long time, classical music, um, and uh, I came out to Hollywood uh, about ten or eleven years ago. Um, found out that my education was almost useless and had to sort of start start again. Uh, uh, climb up the ladder, you know. Um, start by assisting people and helping out around the studio. And what what's one bit of advice you would give to a, like a young person that's just breaking into this field? What would, what would you say to them? I think one of the big problems for young people writing music is that uh, we're all our own worst critic. 
So you you try something, you don't like it, you throw it away, keep doing that over and over again. And uh, there's a certain barrier you need to overcome. Uh, get ideas down uh, before before killing them. Uh, you know, because if, if you're talented, if you're sensitive, then you're going to be very critical. So that's, that's likely to be a problem. And you sort of need to think about all the um, all the untalented people who just don't worry about it and, and are motoring forward. Thanks. I am here with the sound editor who is here with his crew. Literally, the whole the whole team is here. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're having a lot of fun. We're excited to be here. Is this the first award ceremony that you've attended all together? It is the one, the first that we've attended all together. This is my fourth time uh, being nominated, and every time I've been nominated, my kids say, "Take us, take us." And this year, I thought, you know what? Why not? Let's bring them along and uh, share the experience with them. Now, are you guys excited to be here tonight? Yeah. yeah. Do you think Dad's gonna win? Yeah. 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 So tell me about the show a little bit. Uh, well, the show we're nominated for is called Dino Dana, uh, and basically it's about a young girl named Dana who uh, interacts with dinosaurs. It's a live action show with CGI dinos. So it's almost like uh, a Jurassic Park for young kids. And she learns about science and nature and, uh, you know, uh, archaeology and all that kind of stuff. And um, it's a great gig to work on. Yeah. Tell, tell me what it feels like to be the first Latina. Uh, for it to be nominated for an award in the uh, animated series. So tell us a little bit about what, you, what your nomination is for. I'm nominated tonight for Outstanding Children's Animated Series yeah. and Outstanding Original Song uh -huh. Lyrics and it's for Elena Vavalor, Disney's first Latina Princess series and oh I'm God. so happy I've been wanting a Latina Princess since I was a little girl so I'm so proud to represent tonight. So that was your inspiration for the series then? Well, I, I came on as the co-executive producer and head writer and poured my heart and soul into the show. So if you could go back in time to like uh, yourself when you were a little girl and you could give yourself a little piece of advice now, what would it be? I would say don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do anything. You better just keep dreaming because that's what the world needs, dreamers. I am with the beautiful couple from Days of Our Lives. How are you both doing this evening? It's so nice to see you. Really good. Really good, really good. <laughs> How are you? I am doing great. I'm excited to be here. And I'm excited to see all these talented people tonight. How does it feel to be amongst all of this energy? Go for it. Um, you know what? Every year, it's I always say it's a pleasure. And um, it, it, it's always good to, to be around the cast and the crew outside of work yeah. you know we we see them every day at work but being free from you know the work environment it, it's it's just a it's, it's it's a different kind of fun yeah so it's always good to be here and, and see other people from other shows as well days of our lives is such an iconic show how does it feel to be a part of that show and also be nominated and be a part of that legacy um, I mean, it, it's very humbling. I feel very honored. I mean, our show's been on for, what, 54 years? So to be a part of that is, it's pretty magical and wonderful at the same time just to know how many amazing people have come through those stage two and stage four's doors. It's, it's pretty wonderful. And, and also for, to have the 27 nominations, it just, it just shows how, how hard we work, how hard our crew works, our cast, everyone, and what we put into it and what it means to us all. Like it's, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. That's amazing. And tell me about the characters that you both play. So I play Lonnie Price. She is a detective and this is her mate over here. Uh, I play Eli Grant, who uh, used to be an FBI agent, but actually is now a detective as well. Um, and we are in a relationship. We've had a bit of a journey. Are you in a relationship in real life or on the show or both? On the show. On the show. On the show. I was going to say, because you guys are such a beautiful couple. I want to see it in real life. <laughs> no, his, his fiance is beautiful. We're both in relationships, you yes. know, so yeah. But it's so, fun playing. It's fun playing one together. So. so tell me about the relationship that you have on the show. Uh, what do you want to know? Everything. <laughs> what can you tell us? That's They've been lot. through a lot. They've kind of had this hate-love relationship from the beginning. Um, they've they've lost a baby together. They they've gone through quite a bit. But I think they they get each other. They know each other. They respect each other. They have a very deep love for for each other. Do you have any advice for? Yeah. I second that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's really great advice. Speaking of advice, what advice do you have for young up-and-coming actors who want to do what you do? 
Oh man, you one really really have thick skin. This is not an easy easy industry to be in, but if it's what you want to do, have passion, be driven, persistence, don't give up no matter what. Work for it and it will it will come towards you. And be patient. And patience. Yes, that's so you good. You have to have patience. Um, this is a business where most of the time things don't happen overnight. You know, and it takes a lot of training. It takes yeah. a lot of time. So be patient. And num also believe in yourself. Yeah. Truly believe in yourself. You are enough. Inspiration for your music. Uh, from the show itself, from the novel that I had read before, and from the producers that took me to Watership Down uh -huh. on our first meeting. They uh -huh. took me from Heathrow Airport straight to Watership Down to know the, the atmosphere of the place. And from, I would say, daily encounters with the director that would come to my house and we would just spend hours talking and talking about the show and about the, the characters. So it's not only sitting at the piano and writing, but trying to understand what's behind yeah. the story. Yeah. So how did you get started in this business? Uh, that's a great question. I, I started playing music very, very early on at five or six. And I grew up in Argentina and my family uh, is, a, they're all in the, into the, entertainment business my mom is an actress my dad is a filmmaker my aunt is a production designer so it, it was very common for me to spend time in in a set or in a green room so it was very natural and slowly I would start writing my little short films and and then helping other composers and you know before I was training I was doing my, my own project so what would you give the, the advice to a young person that's just breaking into this field could you give them a piece of advice I hope I can. I would say study, 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 study a lot because the other things you can learn but you need to study your music, you need to learn your chops very well and get, uh, you know, get into the mix, learn from other composers. For me it was great to work with senior composers. I would just, you know, serve coffee in Xerox uh, copies at their studio so that at the same time that I was doing the conservatory I would understand the reality of the business. So, you know, get involved. I'm here with Tiffany Derry from Top Chef Junior. Welcome. How are you feeling? This I am feeling quite fabulous. You look fabulous. <laughs> I'm good. Everything is great. We have our chefs here and they are stunning on the red carpet and I just love spending time with them. What is your role on the show? Because I know it's the younger kids who are the chefs. Yeah, so I'm one of the judges. Uh, it's Curtis, Vanessa and myself um, and we just get a chance chance to eat some really good food and sometimes we have to tell them what they're kind of you know messing up on or it's not so great but I tell you what they're the best because they take criticism great and they adjust in the moment so it makes judging very easy and, and there's so much young talent like they really know how to cook and they're like 10 years old sometimes even younger that's amazing yeah 10 to 13 they all are they all are very different you know some of them are amazing cooks some of them are into pastry some of them are really in the art and they study and they read and it's just a beautiful thing to watch them grow. What's the most delicious thing that you have tasted on the show? Ooh, that's so hard. Um, the most delicious? I think most times when they cook from like their family or their history or something that they're connected to, they make the best food because it's totally different than kind of what they've shown us, but they're pulling from where they come from, which is something fantastic. That's a beautiful thing. I'm so jealous of your job, by the way. <laughs> you should be. Well, I was on Knott's Landing Knott's for many Landing. years back in the day, the one yes. you love to hate. Oh my goodness. But I'm here supporting Kevin Spiritus and After Forever, the most amazing <laughs> web series about love. So touch me. We all love those series about love. Those are those are my personal favorites. I really can't stop. Those are the ones I binge watch. Oh my gosh. Tell me about his character on the show. His character is the universal person that has the love of his life that's taken away. And the way they shot it and the beauty of it was unbelievable. That's why they have eight nominations. It was beautiful. That's so exciting. So you're here to support him. What a great friend you are. And well, I shot a film with him in the late 80s, actually. So it's so much fun. We've stayed friends all this time. And what was the film? Friday the 13th, part seven. <gasps> oh my God, I loved that movie. Thank you, it was a ton of fun, ton of fun. So what are you doing nowadays? Well, I own an acting school and I'm back into acting now. I have a couple films coming out and I'm pretty excited. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> Where can people find out more information about your films that you've got coming out? I guess it would be IMDb, Lar Park Lincoln. 
Dot com? How are you? Nice to meet you. So, I'm Jake from Innovative Artists. How are you? Good. So tell us a little bit about the show. Well, I represent After Forever, which is a gripping tale about love. And uh, it's, it's beautifully told. The acting ensemble performances are outstanding. It's a very relatable piece because if anybody knows what it's like to love and to lose somebody or just to feel, you can identify with it. It deals with a lot of other topics that are very, very important. I don't want to give away what the story is, so I think it's really important to watch it. But After Forever really touches on human interest and relatability. So for me, what struck me in terms of somebody who's looking for projects to represent was that here's a story that's beautifully told. It has some meaning in it. It's very meaningful. And the performances are solid from top to bottom. Even the smallest roles have outstanding performances. Of course, the top ones are going to have great performances, but even the small roles. So their attention to detail in terms of the writing, performance, directing, and just their entire artistic expression is beautiful. Boy, it sounds like you got an easy job there, but there, what's the hardest thing you've had to deal with on the show, and how did you uh, overcome that? You know, I think what they did is they, they dealt with the budget that wasn't enormous, and they were able to do what any good producers and creatives would do. Leverage relationships, find really, really talented people to work together, and also develop a friendship. I think a lot of productions, whether you have large or small budgets, it's about how well you can work together. And what's the motto that you live by in your personal life and your business life? Well, in my personal business life is to, is to be a decent person and to have meaning, to have purpose, to be able to be helpful to people and, and to just enjoy. I think too many people are running around and not thinking about other people and not thinking about enjoyment of themselves for themselves and for others. It's much better to share life. I love that. Thanks so much. Was so, well, it must have been great acting because it was something my family never heard, and that was dinner is served. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> so I'm very, very fortunate that 37 years later I'm hanging in there. Yeah. And what advice do you have for young, up and coming actors who want to do what you do, who yearn to have a career like yours? Um, you, uh, you know, I call it working the program, and you just have to keep going and work hard and not push for the end result. And you need to, I still go to class, I still go to acting class, my dance lessons, voice lessons, and it's really important. It's a craft, it's a business, that's why I call it show business. It's a business of show. Congratulations on your nomination. So tell us a little bit about, about your work. Uh, so the show that I've been nominated for is called The New Legends of Monkey. Uh, and it's a Netflix show, which we shot in New Zealand entirely. Um, and it's about uh, it's a 14th cent based on a 14th century Chinese fable about a, uh, a monkey king that gets buried by some gods under a rock because he misbehaves, and he gets set free by a um, a priest called Tripitaka, who's actually a girl who's not really a priest, and she's in disguise. And they pick up some friends along the way, and then it's about their journey through China to find some um, hidden scrolls in order to return the world back to uh, gods because the demons have taken over. Well, what's the process like to get ready for something like that, for, for what you do? Uh, I start the conversation with the director and the producers about the, the from my end of things, about what influences we want, what we want it to look like. So we referenced um, The Goonies and uh, Big Trouble in Little China uh, and a lot of um, those sort of spaghetti western style Hong Kong China, uh, kung fu films. And we started there. So we knew we wanted to do a lot of crash zooms. Um, we knew we wanted to do a lot of comedy. And and uh, I mean, it's tailored to teens, you know. So, so what would you, what advice would you give a young person, like, uh, years ago, if you could give yourself a piece of advice, what would, what would it be? Do you think? To get into the industry? Oh my lord, it's really hard. But um, I don't know, man. It's really hard, but it's doable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think. Um, yeah, you just you just got to keep doing the hours and you'll get there. His yeah. impersonation of Porky Pig, who does the animation for it. Can you do a quick uh, impersonation for us now? A uh, uh, quick impersonation uh, now. Quick impersonation uh, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Porky Pig is what you're nominated for, but you also do so many amazing animated characters. Do you come up with the voices all on your own? Well, if it's a classic character like Porky, no. But every day we are, are, we're tasked to create new for new shows. So yeah, the answer is yeah, sure, all the time. Yeah. And what is your favorite character that you have done? Oh, Porky. Porky. 
I got into this business because I wanted to play that character. So it worked out okay. Yeah, that's so exciting. And you have been in this business for so long. What advice do you have for younger actors or voiceover actors that are just coming into the field? Uh, the, you said the important word there, actor. Study acting. Study improv and then study voiceover. Because if you do it the other way around, you won't know what to do with those words. I mean, the script is really the story and you got to be able to tell the story. The, the sound of your characters, the sound of your voice is secondary. Um, that was great advice. Thank you so much. Can you can you say shine on for us into our camera? One, two, three. It's really at the shine on, folks. To shine on Hollywood Magazine at the 46th Annual Creative Arts Emmy Awards.